This fifth-generation Toyota RAV4 might have adopted more of the eye-catching origami-like style of the smaller CHR, but the RAV4 isn't traditionally a car you buy for its looks. This is a car that has thrived on having a reputation for faultless reliability, comfort and utility. It's the vehicular equivalent of a slipper then, the RAV4, and while that might sound incredibly tedious to some, to most people that's exactly what they want in a car, which would explain why this has got the sort of brand loyalty that most big brand SUVs can only dream of. Does this model, which is only available with a hybrid engine and starts from around about £30,000, deserve that kind of blind loyalty? And can it live up to the ever higher standards set by rivals like the Skoda Kodiak, the Mitsubishi Outlander FEV and the Honda CR-V? To start with the basics, the Toyota RAV4 is only available as a full hybrid. That, by the way, is exactly the same thing as what Toyota describes as a self-charging hybrid. It means that you don't have to plug the car in. Instead, it just uses the energy from that 2.5 litre, four-cylinder petrol engine and the car's regenerative braking system to charge up the small battery. That, in turn, delivers a fair amount of pure electric running at slow speeds, meaning that it's impressively quiet and efficient around town. We've even seen around 60 mpg in really slow around town stuff. So clearly, you know, that's much better than you're going to get in an equivalent diesel. But as soon as you get this car out onto faster roads, 50, 60, even 70 miles an hour on the motorway, the economy really dips. And at that point, actually, you're going to see better economy from your standard efficient diesel SUVs. So have a good long think about the type of driving you do before you decide that a hybrid is going to be more efficient than any other conventional alternative. Apart from that, it actually drives really nicely. Of course, you can get this with front-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Um, 215 brake horsepower, which is surprisingly fruity sounding, actually, in the front-wheel drive car, and a little bit more than that even in the four-wheel drive. But it doesn't ever feel like a car that you want to drive quickly. It's even got a sport mode and a sport gear thing, but, I mean, oh, forget it. You know, it's just nonsense. Stick it in normal or eco, drive nice and sedately, don't accelerate too hard because that's when the engine gets really noisy. And that's actually the worst thing about this car is that this two and a half litre engine, it's just really coarse, especially at cold actually, when you first start the car, it's really buzzy. So we'd like it to be quieter when you accelerate, definitely. But other than that, you know, the ride's good. It's just a very easy car to drive, easy to see out of, nice driving position. It's such a comfortable, natural feeling car to drive. And uh, that is precisely what people will want it to be. One thing we would add is that this is not a car to go for if you want a tow car because the RAV4 um, at best will tow around about 1600 kilos just over, which is pretty poor because a lot of rivals like the Skoda Kodiak will actually do more like two, even two and a half tons in some cases. So caravanners or horsey types probably want to look elsewhere. The RAV4's interior is really more about being easy to use rather than being pretty. But you know what, it doesn't look bad actually. Most of the materials, like this leather, it all feels quite nice. I really like these rubberized climate control switches and also the fact that the inside of the door handle is rubberized too, which makes it really easy to shut the door. It's just very practical, it's common sense, and I like that a lot actually. Um, all the switches are where you expect them to be. This eight inch touchscreen, the graphics really let it down and you can't get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so there's no guessing around the fact that it still lags behind its rivals by quite some margin. But, because it's just a straightforward touchscreen, you get these shortcut buttons, which are all very straightforward, it is very easy to use, and as long as you've got the nav on it, then it does have most of the functions that most people are going to want. Um, there's even this kind of nifty little place for your phone to sit and two USB inputs in here, so, you know, there's a lot about this interior that makes a lot of sense. Equipment too is very good, so even on the cheapest car you're going to get climate control, auto lights and wipers, rear parking sensors. Still, most people will choose to go for a mid-spec car because that means you get keyless entry and go, front parking sensors as well, bigger alloys, and if you go for XL trim, which is the upper of the two mid-specs, you even get leather seats and heated seats. This being a Toyota, safety is a given, so you get adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition and the full suite of airbags on every single RAV4 model. So generally, actually not bad at all. The RAV4 is a great size for a family SUV, with decent space for two lanky teens in the back seats, and you get a really spacious boot that you can extend by dropping those middle seats flat. However, it is worth pointing out that normal diesel rivals such as the Skoda Kodiak are not only equally good on fuel economy on the motorway, but also offer more room and even seven seat options. So the RAV4 is a great family SUV, but it is not the most practical SUV on offer at this price. 
Fit for purpose is the phrase that comes to mind with the RAV4. Yes, it looks pretty cool these days, but more importantly, it's comfy, it's likeable, it's practical, and it kind of does everything you want it to. It's just a shame that it's not more efficient than plenty of diesel rivals, in most situations at least. And finance costs probably aren't quite as low as you'd like them to be. You're looking at about £450 or more for a mid-spec car. Even so, low company car costs, it's comfy, it's practical, it looks cool, do you know what? It's a really great family car, so if you can make the maths add up, then it's one of our top picks. For all of the news, reviews and advice that you could possibly want on every electric and hybrid car on sale, head to drivingelectric.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.